Forum. And we're being recorded. So uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, for the record, Stephen Welch, Chair of the Capital Program Committee. I'd like to confirm member access. Jason? Here. Peter? Here. Jill? Here. Christy Parentella? Here. And myself. And uh, Rick? We see a yep. Uh, Noah? Here. Jamie? Here. And Tom? Here. Okay, great. Uh, so let's see, this open meeting of the Capital Program Committee is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. The meeting is via Zoom with video and audio recording. Uh, there's a good chance we'll be broadcast on the town's YouTube channel. Note that anything presented on Zoom uh, will be broadcast to the public. Uh, the town's website identifies how the public may join. Uh, I see no member of the public present, so there will be no public comment at this meeting. Uh, unless otherwise noted, materials provided or discussed at the meeting are available on the town's website. During the meeting, I'll introduce agenda topics and speakers. Please remember to mute your Zoom audio and uh, until your name is called and let's direct comments uh, through the chair. It'll make minutes easier taking for Terry and any votes will be conducted via roll call. With that said, uh, can I get a motion to, uh, well, actually I'll call this meeting capital program committee to order. It's Thursday, September 23rd, 23rd. I'm working quickly. I've got a deadline here, folks, um, shortly after 10 a.m. And uh, could I get a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. moved. Thanks. I think Jill, on your motion. Aye. Jason. Aye. Pete. Aye. And Christy Ferrantella. Aye. Okay, great. Thanks. And uh, note for the record, Christy Kickham has joined. Um, no public comments. Uh, there are uh, minutes to approve. I believe, uh, Rick, correct me if I'm wrong, they're September 2nd. Can I get a motion to approve the uh, uh, the minutes? So moved. Uh, Jill, on your motion? Aye. Jason? Peter? Aye. Christy? Aye. Carantella? Sorry. Christy Kickham? Aye. Okay, great. And I'm an aye also. So uh, this morning we've got the uh, Nantucket Memorial Airport in for FY23 request and some out year discussion. And uh, with that, I'll turn the floor over to Tom. Tom, good morning. Good morning, thank you. Um, I've asked Noah to take the lead for us. I may have to jump off here shortly. I'm uh, actually out on medical leave, so I gotta address some issues possibly later. So Noah's gonna walk us through this today. Okay, hope you feel better. And uh, Rick, would you mind pulling up their uh, FY23s? You're probably on it, but just in case. That it? Yeah, and just before we get started, would you mind zooming in on the, uh, uh, the, the, you know, maybe the first three years of the, or hiding some of those columns? So I don't have to break out my bifocals. I've got uh, everyone up in the group so I can see who's speaking and, and um, occupying some real estate here. Is that what you want, like that or what? Oh, awesome, thanks a bunch. Yeah. So, so um, can, I, can I just jump in for a second? Yeah, go ahead, Rick. So, uh, Noah, you have this spreadsheet, um, and I think the normal course of action would be go to through this, the ones that are for FY23. So, and I can, Steve, and I can put up the, obviously the capital request if you guys want to see them, but Noah, if you just want to start with the nobody, the housing development and nobody here, and then just work your way down, I think that's probably easiest for the committee, right? Sure, I'd be happy to do that. So for line number eight, I'm sorry, Noah Carver, assistant airport manager um, here for Tom. I'm Jamie Sansbury is on as well, the finance manager. Um, for fiscal year 23, the first project listed is the Novadier Farm Housing Development Design and Owners Project Management. Um, we are looking to complete design. We have some preliminary sketches for two separate townhomes um, in the uh, Park Circle area, currently an undeveloped lot cornered by Park Circle and the Delta Fields. We call it the Crew Quarters Project. It's to house 
Um, predominantly airport employees who we have trouble, trouble retaining or recruiting for these positions. The developments could also be used to, to house other municipal workers who have a critical services or emergency role responding to airport emergencies. Um, in our plan. We reviewed this with uh, Mr. Turbot at Town Finance. He had some, some advice to raise costs for, for considering the OPM work. Um, this design numbers have been provided by our engineer who built a cost tool for us as we spec out how we would approach it through different sizes of the townhomes, different quantities. Um, how much of the site work to take on initially. And we did decide on the two, two townhomes initially. And those are side-by-side -side duplexes, two units each with two to three bedroom. Two, two to three bedroom units. I'm sorry, two, two to three bedroom units per home. So four, four family dwellings associated with those. For maintenance, equipment, vehicle purchases in your capital packet, there are a suite of items associated with that. There's a replacement for Airport 11, which is our primary operations vehicle. There's a parking enforcement vehicle. Um, I think we've since revised that cost based off of comments reflect an electric vehicle. Filling a compliance manager position vehicle as well as I think we put in for a single ground power unit. This is the mobile cart that can power uh, aircraft instead of it using its, its engine. It's also used to, to provide a startup assistance. Hey, uh, Noah, I, I got to interrupt, sorry. Uh, given the, just the, there's quite a few on the list. I think I'd like to pause at least on these larger uh, cost items to get some, see if there's comments or uh, questions from the membership. So just on the um, Nobody or Farm housing development concept and request, are there any questions or comments at this time? Okay, great, thank you. Go ahead, Noah. Okay. Um, TSA flooring and replacements, um, 53,000, it's an old carpet. We have a quote to replace with luxury vinyl plank flooring. Um, IT equipment upgrades, 155,000. I believe we identified four workstations and one of our servers as recommended by our consultant. Paint beads, rubber markings removal for 729,000. We rotate through the airfield. We're responsible to maintain the markings on the airfield. Um, one of the certification standards is to avoid repainting over markings more than four times. These markings tend to move and bleed. And then the paint itself actually builds up to a layer that gets scraped off by the snow removal equipment. So that's our annual effort that reflects runway, runway 624, which is our main air carrier runway. I'll pause there for a breath. Jill? <clears throat> Sorry, did, um, what's the, not to confuse everybody, but what's the repaving going on now? Because um, obviously, you know, it, it looks pretty busy over there. Yeah, the, the reconstruction project that's underway currently is the full depth reconstruction of Taxiway Echo. Taxiway Echo is the full length parallel taxiway to our main runway. Gotcha, and that's already, so that's the only thing going on for repaving. That that's currently the only um, only pavement project. It has some it, it has some potential add-ons. While we might make use of you know the contractor being here to address some other critical areas, maybe by our you know with some sub taxiways or general aviation areas, but it's predominantly okay. just at Echo. Thanks, Noah. I just didn't know if some of what you're doing, some of those costs are factored into any of these. No, they'd be separate. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, Christy, kick them. Uh, Christy, you're mu muted. Sorry about that. Just going back to the vehicles. Um, no, uh, what does a primary ops vehicle look like? What is that? 
Um, it's a it's a Ford F series pickup truck, um, crew cab, four wheel drive because we will plow with it. Um, you know, not too many bells and whistles past past the crew cab and some heavier duty electronics. We put a mobile tablet in it. It needs to support an air band and a company radio. Okay. Are you um you also said something about a compliance vehicle, uh compliance officer vehicle. Are these are any of these new vehicles to the airport or or are you replacing vehicles? Airport eleven would be a replacement. Yep. The compliance manager vehicle we had historically, it's a position that's been unfilled for, for, for several years. We've actually moved the compliance manager over into the vacant security role. Um, we haven't had that specified vehicle um, for a number of years for the compliance manager, probably five or more. So I'm not really sure how to answer that if it's a new vehicle or not. It's been a, a vehicle we haven't planned for for a number of years, but it's one historically that the airport has had. Okay. Um, and then you said there was an electric vehicle there? Yes, for going forward, we'll be self-managing our parking lot. We have the main parking lot in front of the terminal, our GA parking lot and a small overflow lot by the hangar area where the FedEx operation is. So this is a, the vehicle associated, um, it, we changed from a gas vehicle to an electric vehicle for a park enforcement vehicle. It's the same model that you might, you know, commonly know as like a, a meter park enforcement or the old fashioned meter made vehicle in urban environments. Could, could you guys get by with like an electric golf cart or some sort of um, other, is that sort of what this is kind of going towards? Um, we'd like something, I'm sure there are other options. We'd like something enclosed. It's uh, the technology now, we would have a license plate reading camera in it and upload the radios, the beacons, and possibly a operational iPad or laptop. So I think, you know, there are different electrical vehicle options we could consider. I just might want to stay away from the term golf cart because to me that implies that it's you know, doorless. Yeah, I, a golf cart was a bad, bad uh, example, but um, they do have options that are not a car, but something that is enclosed. All right, thank you. Okay, uh, Pete. Hey, uh, thanks, Stephen. Thanks, uh, Noah. Just, um, I mean, curious, going through all these, I know a lot of uh, the costs associated with these line items are, aren't necessarily um, born or, or funded by the town. Is it possible? I mean, are they all the same ratio of, of FAA money versus town money? I'm sure the, the nuts and bolts are in each of the respective um, uh capital request forms online but i mean going through these just high level um is it possible to you know mention as we're going through what the breakdown is of cost borne by taxpayers versus faa versus you know uh, you know any other sources yes um, i'm looking at, at like the house thing. housing for example is that uh so FAA house covered is that Anything that says AIP will be covered at the typical 90% FAA, 5% state DOT, 5% local share. I'm okay. um, going back from the top, the Novadir Farm housing project in OPM would be airport funded. Vehicle equipment purchases are typically airport funded, but we often compete those for a 80% cost share mass DOT grant. We've had a lot of luck getting those in the past, but those are retroactively funded. It's not right. typical to wait for a grant opportunity and then submit for a vehicle. It's usually the other way around. The vehicle is purchased and delivered, and, and then we apply for funding. Um, the flooring and IT equipment upgrades, as well as the paint and rubber removal markings, are all airport money projects. Got it. And that's where we've gone to so far. Okay, great. Thank you. So AIP is, is that standard split and everything else is mostly airport funded, possibly with some retro 
active funding from grants and DOT grants and other grants. Um, great. All right. That covers that one for me. Was curious. Um, a lot of other, you know, say DPW, you know, or the sewer department when they come in with uh, vehicle, um, you know, various vehicle and equipment purchases, usually separate line items. Not sure if there's a reason that we're, we do it differently here. Um, I was just trying to mm -hmm. upload the or download the zip drive with all the different quotes. Um, but sometimes it makes it easier to, uh, to Christy's question, you know, what various vehicles are we looking at? You know, what's the, the breakdown of each one? Is it replacement? Is it a new vehicle? Um, I know it's a little bit more work to list them out separately, a little redundant, but might be helpful for us in the future to be able to see the individual breakout. Cause uh, I was just looking at the Rory um, or the submission online on it. And it looks like it's a, a quite a wide range of different types of vehicles, uh, parking lot vehicle, as you said, compliance vehicle, but then a a GPU, not sure what that is, a lab card, a tire dolly, maintenance trailer, which doesn't necessarily fall under vehicles, generator housing. So it seems like there's a lot of stuff lumped in there, which um, might behoove us to see them more um, specifically um, listed out um, with separate. I don't know if there's a reason they're lumped in. Maybe there is, and I'm not familiar with it, but um, and maybe somebody else on the committee might have an idea also. Yeah, uh, thanks, Pete. So uh, on the lines of that suggestion, I think what would be uh, most helpful at least is a one layer down, one level down summary. So we have the overall cost and then a breakdown of the vehicles. I do. I was having problems with the zip downloading and opening it. So you may have this in there, Noah, but if there's a breakdown with a brief description as opposed to just a line item with a cost uh, for the individual um, uh vehicle or pieces of equipment. This is aside from what's in the in the request form itself. Um, and again, you may have this in your zip, but I wasn't able to access it. All right, I'm looking, I'm bringing this up. No, I'm certainly whatever format um, the committee would like to see this data, we'll make it available. Um, were there specific questions? Do you want me to listen? I'm sorry, I didn't originally. The, the lab service car, the flat tire dolly, the maintenance trailer, the generator housing. Did you want me to cover any of those items? So, I mean, personally, I, I was able to get the zip drive open. I mean, it looks like there's, you know, a pretty good summary of each piece here. I guess my my thought was whether or not it would, you know, behoove the committee to see them all as separate line items on the um, uh, on our uh, breakdown or our, our capital request summary as opposed to all lumped into one. And not sure if we specify that to other departments, but not to the airport, or if it's a department by department, um, you know, choice that they can make. And I'll, I'll leave that up to Steven or, or even Rick on whether or not we think those should be broken out. Okay. Yeah, no, Pete, that's good. I think we'll take that up in our discussions and we may end up uh, looking for some additional information on that. Uh, it is typical that we would have the department, Noah, just, you know, going forward, uh, break out, you know, for instance, DPW by vehicle. And then if there's like vehicles, they group them together. Uh, obviously in your instance, it uh, with the airport, it may be a little different as opposed to two uh, Ford Rangers and maybe uh, the GPU, the ground power unit, and some other, you know, if you've got a mobile generator. So it might be that it's categorical uh, uh, based upon use as opposed to based upon type of vehicle. But it would be helpful to have that breakout when we're doing processing requests. Um, you guys are, you know, I'll note you guys are a little bit different animal. A lot of your funding, you know, you are self-funding or you end up with state and federal funding. Um, but I think to be consistent from the department to department, uh, we should take a closer look at that. And uh, uh, Rick and I will do that and then follow up with you. Um, okay, uh, next, if no one else, uh, if there's no other questions or comments, we'll move to the next. Okay, the, oh, Keith, by the way. Sure. So the South Apron no Noise Firm construction, this would be an airport funded project. We actually, we reviewed it very closely with the FAA and they did take the position that it was not AIP 
eligible, what this would do is construct a, I, I believe the spec was a 25 to 32 foot earthen berm. I'm sorry, 32 feet sounds high now that I say that, but it was an earthen berm west of the future south ramp expansion as a noise attenuation feature. So if you're heading nominally south on Monahansett Road, where Monahansett Road begins to curve away from the airport fence, the noise berm would follow the boundary of the south ramp as it, south ramp expansion as it heads towards Nogadir Beach. We did some noise studying, some noise, we did a noise impact study and it found that there was a benefit to having, having this berm. And even though it's not, not eligible under AIP, it's been a priority project of the commission. So that reflects the cost of relocating the soil, vegetating the berm and, um, and some related site work. Uh, Jill, comment? Thanks, Noah. So does that mean that you're going to just put this berm outside of the fence? Or <clears throat> is this going to come closer to the road? It's entirely inside the airport fence. So okay. it's, a, it's an airside project. It's um, abutted up against the, it, it would be the northwest boundary of the expanded south ramp. OK. Um, because I don't, do you have vegetation inside the fence really anywhere else? That I've only walked those three sides, so I don't know the whole property, but. Yeah, so that, that portion of um, the airfield along our perimeter road and between that project footprint is currently um, scrub oak, um, heathland vegetation like blueberry, um, bearberry, and some smaller pitch pine now. So that would be replaced with a vegetated berm and the berm itself could then be revegetated either with that habitat, um, with trees, um, with something for either ecological value or further noise attenuation value. But that would be part of the design. But that isn't, is that on other perimeter of the, of your property? Like, is it out by, do you have berms in other places? So we don't have, you know, the airport has never had a noise, noise berm or a physical noise barrier before. So there isn't an example that I can point to okay. on the airfield currently. The best item that I can think of in sort of a scope and scale is if you've ever seen the Wisconsin sewer treatment plant, it's mm -hmm. similar in form to that, to that berm that surrounds that facility. I think that was more of a aesthetic one to hide the building than to deal with any noise mitigation though. Can you share the noise study? I guess that was done a while ago. Yes, um, it should be available through our, um, through our commission materials, but I'll distribute it to the, to the Capcom as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, no, just on that topic, are there um, other runways that you, you're thinking you would be doing this? Is this kind of like a proven pilot? It, you know, it's effective, but you want to see how it works out and there's others, or is it kind of a one location deal? So the only, the only, the only planned project is in this location along the footprint for the South Ramp expansion for the airport. I think it's, um, you know, noise berms are done at other airports and they're found to be a fairly effective tool, but there aren't a lot of them. They don't necessarily see funding or, or see construction. So I think what, you know, I, I think that would have to be a, you know, balanced infrastructure priority value of that commission. It's something that could be put in place in any other location. Okay, thanks. Uh, and before we get too far along, I want to back it up uh, to the vehicles under the touch at once approach to management. Um, if you could, I think what we'd like to do there, Noah, is just uh, in a set of rows below that request grouped, uh, break out the individual uh, pieces of equipment and vehicles. And then that way, when we sit down to do our review, we'll have it in this format. It'll make it simple, easy, and um, Conveying that now saves uh, emails and discussion amongst three people. So uh, with that, I'd say, let's go back to uh, the presentation. Okay, thanks.
Thank you. So after the A220 gate hard stands, we have gate eight, hangar eight paving. We are, that is, that is currently shown as an airport funded project. We're looking to utilize Lawrence Lynch, which is our contractor for the taxiway Echo Works perform that area. But we have three, three, maybe four different areas along the north ramp, hangar eight, the T hangars, and the gate that comes into the north ramp behind Harbor Fuel. It's just, it's a very old pavement. Um, from an engineering score, we, we utilize what's called pavement condition index. It evaluates the pavement and translates it into a numerical score, some of the lowest scoring pavements on the airport. So that would be the cost to, to rehabilitate that pavement. Okay. The commuter apron reconstruction, which would be a, I'm sorry, I skipped over the permitting for the airport layout plan update projects and runway 24 reconstruction. So this would be an AIP funded project. In the future, we will have to reconstruct runway 624, which is our main air carrier runway. To do that, it involves some regrading along the margins along the shoulder of that runway. That's also mapped to priority habitat. So it's a project that would have to go and go ahead and be uh, reviewed and permitted under the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act with uh, the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Permitting Staff and the Division of Fish and Wildlife. There's an additional anticipated set of projects we're currently reviewing our airport layout plan for some geometry related issues for how runway 1230 intersects with our other two runways. And depending on the, the solutions we identify to, to fix that issue, there would also be an additional environmental permitting effort. So this is our, our best guess to support those two permitting efforts, given that one is currently not, not necessarily known in its full extent, and, and the one is, is fairly well understood. Of course, the one being well understood is related to 624, the unknown is related to the ALP update. The commuter apron reconstruction, which is an AIP funded project. Every year or two, the airport has been reconstructing old existing ramp. This is the piece for the non-sterile sort of Cape Air, where we used to have Island Air, Nantucket Express, the aircraft that would go back and forth to Hyannis, New Bedford, where you would not go through security to get on those flights. So in front of the terminal is, um, I'm sorry, I don't have the square footage, but it's probably on the order of two acres worth of ramp. So terminal improvements, which would be an AIP project. We have AIP listed. Um, we, we would just call out, there's different infrastructure funding items that are under consideration now by Congress, it's not clear if they would be issued through the AIP program or through a um, other transactional agreements or other federal program, but we still anticipate the same funding splits. We're just calling it AIP for, um, because that's the program we know. So the idea, I think everyone's familiar with our terminal. It was designed when Nantucket had 90% of its employments through non-secure air carriers over the last decade that has switched. 90% of our emplanements now come through and plane through aircraft that require TSA screening. And it puts a different set of demands on the terminal and the way we need to use the terminal. And we've been looking for ways to improve the way we use our existing space. Whether this is infilling a vestibule, repurposing existing areas, um, Consolidating some of the information technology that the airlines use to make the most out of spaces. In the packet that we provided to the Capcom, there's a diagram. The largest sort of use of this proposed 8 million would be moving the, the baggage screening to the basement. So below where it's located currently, the TSA baggage screening is out of sight behind the airline counters 
we'd like to repurpose that baggage screening room for additional hold room, additional secure TSA screen passenger holding, drop the baggage screening and the conveyor system into the basement. If it displaced the uses in that basement, but that's really just storage of equipment. That's a, a low cost sort of high ease to find another available space for those uses. Um, it's about an $8 million project. We're using the opportunity for all of the talk that you hear about infrastructure to identify this project, to compete for those funding opportunities. And it's, it's really not one we would pursue unless it was federally funded. Any questions specific to the terminal, terminal improvements before I move on, Mr. Chair? I'm I'm going on the if I see a hand I'll uh, call a name approach. So the airport rescue and firefighting truck, which would be AIP eligible, we currently maintain three pieces of equipment. These are fire trucks, but they're specialized for aircraft airport re aircraft rescue and firefighting. We're looking at the future where. Um, JetBlue has indicated they're going to deploy the Airbus 220 to the airfield. Um, the Airbus 220 is one foot longer um, than the current category of ARC equipment. This pushes the airport up into a higher category of response from an index B to an index C, which requires us to respond with 3,000 gallons of water and the associated agents rather than 1,500 gallons. So the $1 million is either the placeholder for trading in an existing truck, getting a new larger truck, getting a new 1,500 gallon truck, and just being ready to respond with two 1,500 gallon trucks. But this ties into a, a hard and fast FAA emergency response requirements, which is why it's an item that they fund. Um, having said that, I realize I skipped over the A220 gate hard stands at number 14. So I would like to go back to that one. Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, please. Yeah, I've, okay. I've got some notes here. I was going to do cleanup later, but thank you. Okay. So the A220, the Airbus 220 is an aircraft that JetBlue has just taken delivery of. It's replacing all of their E190s. The E190 is the aircraft that currently services. Nantucket. The A220 is a 144 seat aircraft. I believe it's 128 feet long, which is one foot over the standard that I just cited previously for index B. And it's also about 30% heavier as well as wider. So our existing configuration for our hard stands they won't be suitable for this aircraft and operating this aircraft among the mix of other aircraft that we have. So we would go undergo a design and concrete effort where we would re-space the hard stands. It could involve adding more concrete to existing hard stands. It could involve putting in new hard stands as we affect the down the line spacing for that aircraft. We didn't cite AIP eligible. That's an item that we're trying to determine. If a planning study supports that the A220, um, that the airport has fundamentally changed to accommodate the A220, it's likely that this could be accommodated as an AIP project. Um, if the result of the planning study is, well, really the airport just did this project a few years ago, was there really a reason to believe that the A220 should have been here? Then it may not be supported as an airport, as an AIP project. If that were the case, we might look at ASMP funding. It's possible we could even ask JetBlue for the, the cost share associated with this project. I think it's something that we are still, still working on, but the air carrier it certainly does have the right to make this, um, this equipment change and bring this equipment in. Jason? Yeah. yeah. No, is this, is this required? Because if these planes come in, you have to have this, right? It doesn't, like it doesn't function or reach or to do what it needs to do. Yeah. So there's, there's two elements to that, to that question. The A220, even though it's a larger aircraft, it's still what the FAA considers a design group three aircraft. And the airport is a design group three airport. So it's really accommodating an aircraft 
even though it's bigger than some of the other design group three aircraft, it's within, within the spec of the airport to accommodate. Um, should we accommodate this aircraft is, or how we would accommodate this aircraft, the best way to do it for the static loading associated with the weight of that aircraft is to have a concrete hard stand. For the E-190s that JetBlue operated, and they did operate them at the heavier end of that range, is even those aircraft rutted unimproved pavement, pavement that didn't have concrete hard stands associated with it. It doesn't happen immediately. It happens over the course of six months, a year, two years, you develop the rutting, but rutting is dangerous and rutting breaks down pavement, accelerates pavement decline and causes add-on safety issues. So if it is going to be an aircraft that the airport would see routinely, it really is sort of the best in a, a risk assessment methodology to, to make sure the right pavement is underneath it. Okay, thanks. Uh, Noah, on that, uh, just the single largest expense other than the construction itself is the PFAS related. Uh, do you see that there, I'm just kind of curious, this, is, this isn't gonna be the only time we run into this. Mm -hmm. And um, obviously you all are accounting for the cost in the projects as you go, um, as these projects come up and they're executed. But is there any chance with the way the federal government has worked with airports in the past that there could be, uh, for lack of a better term, a, a clawback uh, <laughs> funding for those costs? I mean, in this instance, it's about 300,000 that's budgeted. That's a significant amount of money. And I'm kind of curious what you think overall in terms of the direction of it. I think the FAA has done a really good job of staying not responsible for the impacts of PFAS, which is due to a process and a product that they mandate airports use. I do not anticipate any relief coming from the FAA. If there is relief, I think it would be through an EPA um, designation under CERCLA, potentially opening up um, Superfund financing. But even then, um, it, it's such an overfunded, underfunded, um, piece of legislation. I, I don't see any federal relief in the, in the short term. I think it's, I, I think it's going to come back to um, user financing in the long term from airport users, so airlines, and I think it will be through future cost recovery from other responsible parties. Okay. Thank you. Um, Return the direct digital control system for the terminal geothermal system. Um, we have a supplemental, a supplemental funding request for $364,000 um, to augment our building control system. It uh, communicates between all of the different pieces of our HVA system from our rooftop units to our cabinet heaters to our geothermal system, makes it available. Um, you know, through uh, remote access controls. Um, it's supplemental, um, bids came in high and, you know, with most projects on Nantucket, bids come in high and, or we have to go and ask for supplemental funding for those. Okay. Or the airport master plan, uh, we completed the last airport master plan, I think seven or eight years ago, as I alluded to earlier, a lot has changed even in that time frame, with the shift in the growth to the large air carrier aircraft that operate seasonally, as well as larger aircraft that operate on the GA transient ramp. It's really pushing the airfield passenger capacity, um, even affecting uh, air traffic regionally and with the national system. So this would be an AIP funded planning effort to try to set the stage for the next five and 10 years of project solutions that would help address those impacts. Questions, comments on that one? Okay. Uh, Noah, did I somehow miss the uh, airport rescue and firefighting truck? Um, 
I believe I did cover that and right before I backtracked to the eight to 20 hard stands. Okay, I was reviewing notes. Okay, thank you. I'd be happy to. No, that's fine. I've, I've got the request here and I, did, I didn't actually have questions on it, but I, I didn't tick that one off on my sheet as covered. Um, before we get into out years of which there are a few, um, which I think will just be a general, uh, I just wanted to circle back on the housing. A uh, couple of quick comments on that, Noah. I, I think, um, you know, just doing back of the envelope math, which I love, um, unfortunately, the cost for the units are nearly two orders of magnitude more than what is recently uh, or currently proposed for the town housing of employees and, uh, you know, general municipal employees, whatever the department is, um, aside from the airport. And while I realize that it is in the same general area geographically, um, but it is also a different layout. Uh, so there is an economy of efficiency of uh, mobilization and layout and kitchens and so on and so forth. The cost itself, I think, are, I just wanna be clear, these are two, um, all of that said to get to my point uh, after a question. Um, these are two units with a total of five bedrooms. One moment, please. These are two buildings, four units, correct? Okay, so um, basically what I would suggest is that if it is, if my understanding is correct, and it's two units, one two bedroom, one three bedroom, or is it there's uh, two units, one is two two bedrooms and one is two three bedrooms? I believe each, each building is one, is a side-by-side, -side, one two-bedroom unit, one three-bedroom unit. Side by side. So there would be a total of uh, 10, 10 beds, 10 bedrooms. When you say units, you're referring yes, to. Yes, that, that's okay. correct. I'm sorry, I'm jumping in here, but yeah, it's two buildings, each with one would have a three bedroom and two bedroom and the other one would have the same layout. Okay, so that changes the calculus. We're about an order of a magnitude more on a per bed basis than what's currently proposed by the town. But there, I guess what I was going to suggest um, now with a little less conviction is the idea of, as opposed to paying a premium for construction cost, is trying to leverage perhaps existing housing stock. And um, even if it is at slightly more than the cost that you are proposing here, which I think it would be less, uh, that would keep free land area that the town might use at a lower cost per bedroom unit for employee housing in the future. So um, it's just something for you guys, I'd ask you guys to consider. And um, you know, we'll, we can take it up at a later time, but that is the thoughts I've been having on the housing. Thank you. Okay, um, if you just wanna to touch on the out years, I realize there's some big numbers, so maybe you could broadcast what um, the types of projects we are uh, you all are expecting and we can expect to see in the future. Sure, so I believe for fiscal year 24, I believe we've touched just on the, the Nobadir farm, that's the construction cost, um, additional maintenance and vehicle purchases, I don't have that information in front of me, but I believe I have everything for the AIP projects in out years, which is, which are the large ticket items. So for fiscal year 24, one moment while I'm bringing up my items, we have, that should represent two different projects, which would be the next phase of apron reconstruction about 122,000 square feet as well as the cost for reconfiguring airport taxiway charlie which is both a taxiway and a vfr daytime utility runway and that's related to a faa geometry standard for fiscal year 24 uh, 19.8 million. I have that as the next phase of apron reconstruction. This would be for our small corporate jet general aviation apron area at 250,000 square feet. Um, 
with a cost of $12 million and the relocation of taxiway Foxtrot at $7.2 million. So taxiway Foxtrot is a partial parallel to taxiway Echo. It's currently unlit. It's uh, old pavement and the separation standards aren't appropriate from taxiway Echo for today's modern aircraft. For fiscal year 26, the large project at $41 million is the reconstruction and relighting of runway 624, which was the main air carrier runway. I'm sorry. And of course, that would be an AIP eligible project. Okay. Thanks, Noah. Are there any uh, additional comments or questions at this point for airport? All right. So I uh, appreciate your time putting this together. Uh, Pete? Yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to chime in kind of uh, as an extension on your last comments regarding the housing. So, I mean, just looking at those numbers, to your point, you know, combined $6.7 million for two duplexes and a total of 10 bedrooms. Right now, you know, I mean, real estate's very expensive to purchase, but to your point, you know, you're seeing five and six bedroom duplexes that are selling for less than $2 million a piece. So, I mean, obviously it's, what, what the airport's proposing is, you know, it, it, the location makes sense. Obviously, if you're, you know, for housing, for employees, you want it new, you want it, you know, nice, you want it up to date. There's probably a lot more code that goes into it, I, I would imagine, but just something to keep in mind, you know, you might be talking about $4 million for the same amount of uh, properties, uh, units, and beds as opposed to 6.7. Um, I don't know, just more color to uh, add on to your comment. Okay. Thanks, Pete. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Tom? Yeah, if I may, I, I just would like to remind this group of our of the challenge that we still face with regard to timing and annual town meeting. This year's annual town meeting is just uh, early May, I believe, and all of our AIP applications are due in May 1. Past two years, we've been able to get in under the wire. They've given us extensions and they've been planning type grants. Um, we have a home rule petition that's going through the process at the state level. And our understanding is that it's in the final phases. So I, I think that's good news, but I just wanted to remind this group because it creates a challenge. You know, we're, we're always trying to, if you will, front load some of these. So I just wanted to bring everybody up to speed that it looks like that may be going through shortly, if we're lucky. Thanks, Tom. I think a lot, uh, you know, specifically with respect to the housing, I didn't see in the introduction that this was AIP funded, um, but if it were, I think, I think it's in the art of the language so that such that if there was an option to, you know, if it was uh, the article or the borrowing approval request to our, you know, town meeting body is along the lines of provide housing for, you know, I'm, I'm just off the cuff, provide 10, you know, two, uh, 10 bedrooms for employee housings. Uh, employee housing or something along the line so that there was some uh, ability latitude to be moving on it and without holding you guys up. Um, the other thing I would suggest is that I, I may have misunderstood the location of the of the development, but to try and work in um, other, if it were to be not purchased to a specific homes to a predetermined specification, which I think, you know, we can purchase a, a Ford Ranger with, uh, or a, a fire truck with certain particular equipment on it. So if, they are, if a uh, request for proposals or whatever the proper term went out for a particular home with particular features to suit the needs, um, it seems like that could pass muster without any problem. Um, but if that weren't to proceed, the idea of using that particular plot of land and perhaps developing out um, at the sa same time, other uses that airport may have or developing if there's a contingent lot, the site so that, you know, while the uh, contractors here are mobilized, we're getting some economy there. Um, all things I'm, I'm sure you guys are thinking about, but 
uh, I think is citizen involvement we need to be mentioning. I think that's a great idea and uh, we'll work with Brian and Rick on the language for the, uh, the bond offering because that's critical when it comes to giving us the flexibility. So that's a great idea. Okay, thanks, Tom. All right, any other thoughts at this time? All right, so Noah, if you wouldn't mind uh, at some point, uh, you've, you've got some time, but in the next couple of weeks, if you could circle back through Rick with a breakdown on the, um, uh, uh, the uh, equipment, the maintenance equipment and vehicles, just within the spreadsheet format, that'd be great. And um, with that, again, I'd like to thank you all for the work you put into these. The airport requests are typically some of the most detailed uh, with some of the best supplemental documentation. And I, I don't want that to go unsaid. So thank you for that. Um, with that, we are gonna move on to the next item on, on our agenda, which if you bear with me, I will pull up in a moment. Uh, the Rory's, how could I forget? Um, are there comments or questions on processing Rory's for these? Obviously, I think I'll just jump in first uh, relative to the maintenance equipment uh, and vehicles. Uh, you know, we can have a discussion when we get to this. I would suggest this particular request on how we might want to package this. Um, this being the, the respective uh, pieces of equipment. Um, or we can address it in uh, as a line item discussion, sub line item discussion, and our recommendation can address if, for instance, the uh, the committee felt particular uh, requests sub items were not something we wanted to put forward. So, for instance, we just as an example, the GPU request is not something we wanted to advance. Uh, we felt it didn't have merit this particular year and we wanted to move it to an out year in our recommendation. Uh, we can do that in our recommendation as a, and reflect it in the overall total versus having separate requests for each of the different uh, pieces of equipment. So that might be one way to handle it. Uh, I'm not suggesting we have that discussion now. I just think it's relevant that with respect to Rory's, um, if you want to leave this one, this Rory incomplete, um, that it make it would make sense to do so because we might change how we process it. Um, questions on that or questions on requests in general and the Rory's for the airport? Pete? Yeah, Stephen, uh, the only comment with regards to that request so, some of the things lumped in there are under fifty thousand. so i think if we did break it out some of them we might see and i'm sure you probably noticed that too once you got the, the zip drive open so i think it, that's probably a longer term um conversation with that line item obviously there's two out years coming um so maybe it's more a conversation for you know an anticipation of next year's but um seems like it would be prudent okay um, thanks. And I think, you know, there's other validity. If the software is developed the way it was conceived, it becomes not only a review uh, and ranking and um, appropriation tool, it becomes a asset management tool. And to have the respective pieces of equipment broken out provides an opportunity to track very easily what the cost was, whether a supplement was required, if the supplement was required, how much. Uh, when it was purchased, uh, a host of other pieces of information that would be helpful. So I'm not adverse to uh, breaking them out. I just want to talk to Rick a little bit about that at some point uh, relative to whatever else, uh, what other type of lifting is going on with capital in the airport. All right. Um, all right, so we will move on. I'm going to slide, slide up here. Or review green sheet committee reports. Anything from select board? Oh, Christy, kick them. Yeah, maybe a question for Rick and possibly ultimately for Brian. Um, I wanted to see is there what's the approach that finance does for uh, the AIP projects? Um, even though they're funded, you know, 90%, um, do you guys have a sort of formula that you sort of follow as you approach those, those requests? Uh, I think the answer is no, but when you say formula, Christy, what, what exactly do you mean? Do you mean, do you mean, I, I mean, um, do you guys, uh, um, check to see that you have, that you, that you were able to full fund it 
um, and then we get reimbursed or uh, I just didn't know. I thought I remember a few years ago, Brian mentioning something about what he likes to do as he approaches those projects in, in, in funding. Uh, I don't know if the, the feds require us to show that we can full fund it or not, but I just was curious yeah. about those. Yeah, I, I um, the my recollection is, and just the one year that I've been here around this, is that we actually uh, request the borrowing for the full amount, and then we um, simply do not, if we get the funding, we um, we don't borrow the full amount. So I'm just looking at last year's, and um, all of them, all of the airport items are uh, the borrowing authorization is for the full amount. Yeah. Uh, Tom, did you want to comment? Yeah, so it is correct. The uh, FA requires us to fund it up front, essentially. But also, as Rick said, you know, we don't uh, put it all in unless we get a grant or we're assured we're getting a grant or something. Because in the past, that's where the airport got into some uh, trouble, I think, where, you know, they, they assume they're getting grants and they would go out and do all this borrowing. So Brian is very careful with that and we work closely with them, but we do have to show up front that we have it. And then they somehow, and Jamie could speak to this better than I can, they back it all down once we get the grant. Okay, okay thanks, that's helpful. All right, yeah, I was just curious. Thank you. Okay, any other airport related questions? Going once, going twice, three times, it's gone. Okay, great. Um, I guess if there's any NPDC or select board or finance committee related comments um, that we might want to hear about or you all want to share, that'd be great. And if not, I don't see. Okay. Um, let me close this out. That brings us to the date of our next meeting, which is September 30th, next Thursday at 10 o'clock. Stay tuned. Um, and with that, I'd like to get a uh, motion to adjourn, please. Oh, Rick. Even just, just saying, so next week, we don't have any departments coming for a review. This next week is one of our flex dates. So we just need to. Yeah, I, what we want to do there. Th thank you for bringing that up. I, I would like to exercise our uh, Rory review workshop. Um, so I think what we'll do is we can get together and it will just be a, kind of an, uh, you know, obviously public, but informal. Let's go through the Rory's. If someone has a question, we're all here. Um, it might be as short as 15 minutes or it could be longer. I think it would be beneficial maybe just to touch, at least touch on the uh, topic we talked about with the airport equipment today um, and whether we wanna break those out because it, it certainly would be, if there's an appetite to break those out for whatever utility is presented, it would be, I think, beneficial to do that earlier rather than later. So why don't we take that up as one of our points of discussion and the other will just be, uh, please take a look at Rory's, take a look at projects. If there's any, any questions you think you may have, we'll be prepared to address them in a committee type of discussion um, next week. All right. And, and then Christy, can, can you maybe stay on just afterwards and we can yeah, just absolutely. share the screen and try and figure out what's going on with yours? Yep, absolutely. Christy K. Okay, great. All right, and with that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So I move. I move. Uh, Jill? Aye. All right. Uh, Pete? Aye. Christy Kickham? Aye. And Christy Ferentella? Aye. I'm an aye also. Hey, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you, Steve. Bye bye. Uh, so, first of all, sorry about whatever problems you're having. That's um, right. So, uh, so, when I pull up the screen. Yeah. When I put sure when I pull up the link, um, it basically um, uh, when I pull up the link, it uh, lets me sign in. I've got a new a new uh, um, password that I put in, but when I pull it up, it's pulling up Rory's from like 2000, 2001. Um, what? No, not two thousand one. No. What? Yeah. yeah. Can, and can so you show I, me? I can't can find. You... I can't find anywhere to pull up current Rory's. And I don't know if it's just user error. Do you have, do you, can you share your screen and, and step through yeah, it or not? See here, yeah, let me, no. um, uh, so, hold on, let me, um, 
I've actually never shared screen. What do I yeah, do? Great. Okay, so fine. So put your cursor down towards the bottom of the Zoom meeting window, and yeah. you should get you should see down at the bottom. Oh yeah. Like security participants chat share screen. Yep. Yeah. But before you do that, pull up the um. Open pull up, up my uh, thing. Yeah, open up uh, the okay. capital request. And then. Okay. All right. Hold on one sec here. Uh, okay, I am. All right. So share screen. Uh, so I'm, I'm okay. go to I'm signed in. Yep. Don't sign up. Just click on Rory's. Yep. So you look submittal date? Yeah. No, you 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 want to click on if you want to do it, if you want to do your Rory, click on click on a proj. So let's see. Again, you know, I gotta move my thing. So go to one that says capital committee review. So two fairgrounds, the second one. Just yep. click on yep. click on that one. And then scroll down, please. And then see where it says my Rory just above the blue box there, up yep. two, up a little bit, click there. There you go. That's your Rory. So, so it was. You go to Rory's up on the top, and then yep. you go, and then you. So, um, go back out for a second. So, click on uh, capital requests at the top, and then um, pick. Let's see. You need to go. I don't. My my view is different than yours, but. Um, Go just click on a department. No, no, sorry, hang on. Scroll, scroll up the screen. That's no, as far as I can go. go. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So I need to, I need where it says Rory's. Can you go back and click on Rory's again? Yep. Okay, so that should be your first step. Now, when you look at that CRF status column there over on the right. Yep. So if it's completed, you don't touch it. Okay, the only ones you touch are the ones that say Capital Committee Review. Okay, okay. and and so. If each one of those you click into it where it says capital committee review and then or anywhere on it doesn't matter, but on the so all of these, so those are all these go alphabetical for you. you apparently it doesn't sort by um they're all so these are all current. Yeah, anything that says capital committee review, but the completed ones, yeah. So no look, yeah, just click on that one, that hard stand one. Oh, not that one, the, the one below it. Uh right here. Yeah. Let's just make sure that it's still working the way we did. And then my Rory. And, and then, then there's that. And then Christy, just make sure that scroll all the way down, please. Yeah. Make sure that you save rankings at the end. Okay. okay. Otherwise. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's what I'll do. So question for you, uh, where it says submittal date, is that irrelevant? Yeah, that's uh, I that's uh I don't even know what that is. So 8, 12, 21, let me just see that one. Affordable housing, 9, 13. Uh, those are probably the dates that I processed it through to capital committee, but it doesn't really, it doesn't yeah, mean anything a, to you. All you need to so, worry about is capital committee review. Those are the it. live ones. And right. there, there's a lot of them, there's lots of them there, unfortunately, Christy. So yeah, that's all right. Um, I'll have them done by next week. Uh, okay. I have I, I've I've been writing them down. I just got to. Just basically transpose it. Oh, you. I see. Okay. Um, all, right. all right. Well, look, Rick, thank you so much. Yeah, not at all. Okay. Have a good week. Yeah, you too. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.